Thank you very much um, once again, Program Director. Um, it has been very, very um, insightful and fruitful day. I really appreciate all the presentations that have been made up to this far. Um, all of them, um, we have learned a lot. And um, for me, this is saying, there's a lot of work that is happening in the district. I think you deserve a hearty round of applause for you. Thank you, um, our presenters, who have done um, exceptionally well in um, giving us um, the meat for tomorrow uh, when we engage in our um, commissions. I think. Um, we shall have uh, enough information that we can actually work with because what you shared with us uh, today, um, it's quite um, valuable as well as um, very much um, insightful. We really appreciate it. I'm not going to be much longer now. Um, uh, when she, she touched on our um, district academic improvement plan, um, she highlighted a um, very important part of our academic improvement plan, which is about our successes, which is about where we were, where we see ourselves. We already vision ourselves and vision ourselves at a higher level. So already, if we stem from that academic improvement plan in 2023, starting a new one in 2024, uh, we really appreciate uh, Babu Soma, uh, your presentation I believe they have the colleagues here uh, who have listened to the presentations before. They have listened to the presentations before. But today, you spoke to our hearts. You spoke directly to what exactly we want to know for us uh, to be able to, when we do our planning, do it with clear insight. I think um, the colleagues will agree. We have been listening to the presentations before. Not saying others have not been doing it well, but today you took it to another level. Um, you, you, you speak to our hearts.
whereas we are expected to be reporting also on the other um, um, uh, priorities. And then alone is a risk because when you have the ACSM report, you know, I'm unable to pro pro provide the report. Or I will sit until the morning trying to put together a report for the entire district where people have not provided a report because they have not even uh, prepared that action plan. Who action plan needs a thorough preparation? It needs to say each and every term what are the activities that we sh shall be engaging in. Which ones, which time we should not, we will not be doing anything uh, in terms of that particular task or activity. But because we are so used into ticket box and uh, malicious compliance, we end up not you know, doing a justice. So I think this time around, with all what has been said um, by all the colleagues that have spoken before, before uh, uh, us this, um, I mean today, um, we are going to be engaging uh, quite um, robust and, and also ensure that uh, we do not um, leave uh, gaps in our uh, preparation for 2024. With that, maybe we need to share the and Uh, we said we are going to work collaboratively 
these shared resources will um, communicate effectively and you start build relationships based on trust. I mean, because they are certain good things that we are doing. As I have said, there is a lot that we are doing as a district and it must actually uh, be appreciated. We are going to continue to support our schools because we are very visible when we go out there. Our teachers are quite um, content that uh, they do get support. We are going to continue to support all our schools by putting programs across where we shall work together. And um, one of the activities that we have put in place is that of FDTs, uh, multidisciplinary teams where we go together to visit schools from different sections. That alone uh, strengthens our collaboration and make us to work uh, better as a team. Also, we shall strive for excellence and uh, innovation, and innovation, and continue to be respectful and um, responsible at all times. But what is also important, that part of being proactive is very important because there are certain things that we don't have to say. If we know that we look uh, in Umbla as a district, we know that the, we have a responsibility of making Umbla continue to shine and continue to rise. Um, I wanted to highlight some of the things uh, in the uh, activities that we managed to do last year. Mount uh, TA, when you are still here, you, you managed through um, your leadership to organize cost us, you cost us, you cost us to do it. And that alone actually uh, shows leadership. Uh, to say, this is what I want to happen, and it happened. And we were there uh, to guide us all the way. Um, we had a leadership session, and it was a third leadership session, where all of us uh, got into different, um, we got into different um, commissions, looking into teaching and learning mainly, uh, taking it because we have embraced and adopted the system-wide approach starting from foundation phase, TCD involved, and we came up with resolutions. I think tomorrow, the other thing that we need to be doing is to check whether we were able to meet all the resolutions that we have put uh, in place last year. Again, I finished. I sat and looked at all the resolutions, and I said, okay. Maybe tomorrow you will say, I mean, I can be hours absent. But I saw that we have quite a lot of gaps on the things that we have agreed upon. But now that um, we have heard um, Abana Badala speaking to us from her office, um, Betsy, um, we need to do things differently uh, because we are capable of doing uh, greater things. We believe we are going to change our ways. Um, we also, we learned that in our years of operating within the districts, we have always known that there were secular things of 2017, but the application of era had never happened before you were coming to our districts. And now when I go there with the team, I will go there with confidence because you have already paid the way. So, uh, thank you very much for that. So, you held those sessions, and other principals were very upset and angry, but we were doing the right thing because it is policy, and we are not going to deviate from policy. Now that we have secular D3 of 2023, uh, which uh, also have um, new information, uh, from the lessons learned over five years and amends that have been made to say 
Yes, we have had secular deal to October 2017. Yes, uh, we were able to uh, categorize uh, under performing schools as per the criteria that was given. Now, there is a very clear criteria that also assists us in identifying a um, very important aspect. That way, we, we, we identify a primary school to be either performing in terms of maths and language. But D3 is very specific, unlike D2. It was saying language. Now, with D3, it is specific, it says lots language of learning and teaching. It's not just any language. Yet, uh, it, was very, it was not very clear with secular D2. Uh, the clarity there was brought about uh, the lessons learned um, at DPE uh, brought about such changes. And um, we are seeing, um, um, we actually saw in 2023 all our second ministries taking charge of their schools by inviting Daya uh, from, her, I mean from DPE to conduct workshops on secular degree for all their schools. Let us give them a hand round of applause. They were showing interest and also giving a uh, clear direction in terms of how. Uh, schools are going to be um, identified uh, when they um, um, uh, underperforming. We also have category of uh, the combined schools, and uh, it simply is very clear as to how we are going to um, uh, separate uh, those uh, phases. Um, I think I highlighted with red those that I needed to speak to. Um, the improvement of um, full functionality monitoring. We are going to deliberate on full functionality monitoring. One of the one of the um, commissions will be looking into provision of uh, resources and school functionality monitoring because um, over, over years we have been conducting school functionality monitoring. But nothing is forthcoming in terms of seeing change uh, in schools. Nothing is forthcoming except when we go with MPLs. We go with MPLs then there will be follow-ups. But when we go all by ourselves, we go there, I don't know how many times, but we do not come up with any kind of uh, assistance to those schools. So one of the uh, areas that we shall uh, be engaging in tomorrow will, that will, will be that of ensuring that we do something that is going to assist our schools with regards to that. Implementation of PPM 104, Usaiba Bileo, this is a lead leader and is going to be sharing on PPMs as well as SOIs and NSOIs. And I'm going to be that. And to say, um, the PPMs that are still there, the SOIs and NSOIs, where do they stem from? But you already presented to us today for people to understand how do we come about uh, with those um, and SOIs and SOIs. Um, maths, science and technology, let's see. That is a very important aspect. We paid a lot of focus and attention on that area. Um, supporting our learners who um, um, taking maths, science and technology. In any case, uh, some of the colleagues may not be aware. We are a number one district in the country when it comes to mathematics and science uh, performance uh, at the level of grade. But for three consecutive years, Mamuti Eadis, Sisha Eadis, 
we hope and believe that we shall continue uh, with that as, as um, the HOD and Mrs. Gomede uh, clearly um, indicated because we are a, a district that is um, providing quality. Uh, we, we shall continue with that. We need to balance it a bit with quantity so that we are not uh, overtaken by um, rural districts. When it comes to foundational skills, that there of reading, which is a flagship of the department, we have programs to continue with those programs that are run in collaboration with NET, with PILO, your PSRIP, your um, all the reading programs, including the reading strategy that we have developed. Um, the support for special needs, um, I mean, uh, we all have to write around, um, behind the, 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 the letters and special needs, provide support because um, I know your team is depleted, but all of us are capable of supporting those, in, those letters. Remember, we have white paper six. Uh, on inclusive education, which then uh, states clearly that uh, we may accommodate those learners who uh, do not experience severe um, disabilities or um, learning barriers. Uh, let me rather use the correct terminology learning barriers uh, in our mainstream schools, and uh, they may then be. Uh, um, uh, able to learn from them. But in a case where we have a moderate, a mild moderate, we have um, learning disabilities, we know that we need to have a learners uh, placed in either a full service school uh, or um, together with uh, Dr. Neil. Dr. Nira, Dr. Yoga, um, I saw a, a social worker there at the back who um, is there. They assist um, in terms of ensuring that, that those forms are available, NSA forms are available, NSA form 1, SNA form 1, SNA form 2 are available for our schools to complete those, those forms, assist parents so that their learners may be assessed and then be placed. So we need to continue to support uh, those learners. Um, the other part that I wanted to highlight, I think I've already spoken to the circular D3, the part of LTSM. The schools will be reopening. Uh, in most cases, you find that uh, when you go to schools, you find uh, LTSM either placed in a storeroom, not utilized by learners. Excuse me. When we go to schools, colleagues, let us make sure part of uh, the resolution that we need to take tomorrow, let us make sure as we are going to be aligning our tools that we are going to use to ensure that our uh, reports um, are enhanced giving adequate information that is needed and evidence that is needed. Let us go out there when we visit our schools to support them. Let us also check whether the storage is <coughs> empty and the learners do have books, the, uh, the station, both stationary and uh, the, the, the textbooks have been distributed. Um, I think the other one is that of working in collaboration with uh, other stakeholders, uh, especially uh, in the area of um, implementing um, safety, school safety policies. Um, we know that uh, other, other, other departments are also very um, um, they are very um, proactive when it comes to the issues of um, safety. We also have Department of 
safety and liaison uh, that deals with the issues of safety and support at the school, our schools when we experience uh, um, issues of um, uh, threats and um, they always support us. We also work with um, we have worked with uh, other stakeholders. Uh, last year, 2023, we've managed to work with um, to touch base with all our stakeholders, your um, social partners, your institutions of higher learning, uh, your municipality. We have actually been able to uh, collaborate and work with quite a number of um, other people uh, or other organizations to show the collaboration as uh, the um, organizations that work in it. I saw movie here. I think um, I need to just end the slide show. But with that, um, I saw movie. There is, there is this important one that I wanted to show, that one of past rates, that is a challenge. A credit, this is um, the past rate uh, of learners in 2023. We have 99 percent, 99.53 percent agreed. Uh, I don't know what happened to the 0.18. The, 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 they were not ready, they were progressed. But uh, remember, there's no assessment in in grade uh, that. Uh, we uh, make a letter to either be or pass. There is no formal assessment. There is informal assessment uh, that um, monitors and uh, analyzes the performance of the learner, whether the learner is ready to go to the next grade. Uh, if you look into all other grades and then you move to grade 8, grade 9, grade 10 and grade 11, we have a challenge. We have a very serious challenge. Remember this grade 11 that I'm presenting to you is a grade 12 of this year. So it means we need to work a double effort to make sure that our learners in grade 12 get adequate support because if we only have 75 percent of learners that have passed, we have a challenge already. Remember 75 percent is not even a, a no longer a, our, our benchmark. We have gone beyond 75 percent. Uh, I think the other, the other presentation, the other slides will actually be um, um, a, a presentation showing um, this in um, graph form, so that uh, all of us have a, an understanding that we perform very well, even though the HOD. Uh, earlier indicated that we need also to check whether um, those standards uh, there are the, uh, in order. Uh, we, we cannot compare grade 12 and grade uh, FET and grade and, and foundation phase. But if you look into our graph, you will see that there is a um, high performance in all other grades, and then we get a dip in grade 8. There's also grade 9, then we start to go up at uh, grade 10 and 11. So we should be worried because that is a big thing moving away from mathematics. We need to 
com continue to encourage our learners to participate in mathematics. Um, there is a graphical presentation of the. Remember when I presented earlier, when I was doing the papers, I said one of the things that we've agreed upon that was agreed upon not only in our district but at national is that we have adopted hashtag one two three must four. One two three four must four. But if you look at the performance at grade eleven. The bulk of learners are sitting at one, two, three, and four. There is nothing there. So something ought to be done. Even with mathematics, with mathematics literacy, including the technical mathematics. Same physical sciences. Again, with life sciences, accounting, we must get to the lower end. When we engage tomorrow in our commissions, we need to be the lower end. Then you look into how the graph uh, changes when you get to grade three. Very few learners are at grade A, at performing at one, two, and three, and the bulk of learners are performing at four, five, six, seven. Same with uh, grade six, they are performing at, 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 at grade, I mean, at three, four, five, uh, but many of them are performing at uh, the higher levels. Grade 9. Look at what is happening. 2022, this is how they perform. 2023, they are here. I think we should be very much worried. Babu Guyan, Babu Tedis, Babu Tebu, Babu Tebu, Menele, Abekon, Babu Noman, Amzadi. We need to do something. Uh, in terms of this, we have so many uh, supporting programs for mathematics. Our maths, uh, our, our maths capital program, our Innovo, so many of the programs that we have. We shouldn't be getting such a, a disadvantage. We shouldn't be getting such a With that, credits, um, I'm no longer going to waste further time, but this was just to highlight where we are. They are performing much better in other uh, subjects uh, than in mathematics. Um, with that, credit, I just want to say we will be able to um, work well together uh, if we ensure that we support one another. Uh, they say dream work, they say teamwork breeds dream work. So with uh, the documents that we developed in 2023, it's still relevant. They are still relevant. Yes, we do not know our results yet, but these documents are still relevant for us to build from in this uh, uh, place. But again, we have been given enough and adequate information today for us to be able to um, start our work.